got churn. Hey, how many of y'all got churn out here? Boys that are 25 years old. How many of you? Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up if you got a kid 25 years old. I'm going to ask you a serious question. If you seen your kid get blown apart with a 12 gauge shotgun like that, what would you do? Yeah. It's okay, sir. Come on. It's okay, okay sir. Would you go look it's at okay, something sir. like that? Your kid. Come on, now. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, it's okay. So What's going on, fam? Commander General Yohanna here, ISUBK, ISUBK.com. Had to come at you right quick, as you know already. Uh, they finally put the charges on the two Edomites in Brunswick, Georgia. They shot the brother Aubrey dead. And here's the evil part, of course. This happened back in February. This case against three white men facing multiple charges accused of chasing down and killing Arbery. A 25-year-old black man who was out for a jog in Brunswick, Georgia on February 23rd of last year. Let's speak now with Ahmaud Arbery's father, Marcus uh, Sr., Marcus Arbery Sr., and his attorney, Benjamin Crump. And Marcus, I want to thank you for being with us. I know that this is an incredibly difficult process for you and your family. How are you feeling about the jury selection process so far? Oh. I just pray to God we get the right job. I feel real emotional. And you know, and I'm just concentrating on justice for my boy. And you know, it's still emotional for my family because it's, it's, it's a raw trauma bug. You know, to watch my son get lanced like that by three white men running down and lanced them like that. It's really raw. You've, you've said that. You say that it is a lynching. Yes. Yeah. The video tell that. Anybody that sees that he was listening, all you had to do is watch that video. Marcus, there there is a video in this case, and there's also been a national reckoning on race. How much do you think society has changed since the Trayvon Martin case? Not much. You know, it's, it, the same thing's still going on. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the cycle keep beating because they don't want to bring no change. That's why we keep got to keep fighting hard to try to bring this change. You know, our people still, our American people still suffer in the same way, but they're doing it in a different style way. You know, and I, I'm thinking I can see this last stuff in the 1800s, just the 2021, and it's still going on. We got to find a way to stop this. That's why we concentrating on justice and getting us conviction so these men can be put away the rest of their life so we can got to worry about this work and heal. Black people can heal. Black people are not going to heal with this stuff keep going on. They tell me, they in fear. What y'all fear for? Y'all the one killing up for nothing. Y'all, we, we the one need to be some of fear. We not killing y'all. Y'all killing up for nothing. Finally, they arrest him and only again because it got pushed all over social media. Otherwise, this would be another black man murdered and forgotten. And these people know that they could murder a black man and get away with it, man. But here's what I wanted to get into a little bit before I hit those scriptures. I wanted, I wanted to just take you back in time for one minute, just so you could see how a joke your black leaders are. You want to realize how much of a joke your black leaders are? I'm going to take you back to 1987. Okay. We in 2020. Okay. We talking 33 years ago. I'm about to take you back to Georgia. I'm taking you to Forsyth County, Georgia, which is about three hours outside of Brunswick, Georgia. And I want you to listen to the Oprah Winfrey show in 87 about these Edomites and the way that they've been treating us and why you should come out of it. And I'm going to go to the scriptures right on it. All right. Let's check this out. This is 1987. Oprah. This is when Oprah Winfrey had a little more gumption left and a little more pro-blackness in her. 
until they completely had her sell out made up billionaire. But before that, she had a little wherewithal to at least discuss the issues. Check it out. We bring you today to Forsyth County, Georgia, just 30 miles north of Atlanta, which in the past few weeks has gained the reputation of being a hotbed of racism. Here are just some of the images of Forsyth County in past weeks that were broadcast around the globe. There's no niggers here, why should they even come, you know? You heard that? There ain't no niggers here, why should they come? And here's the thing, in this county, Forsyth County, they hadn't had a black person in Forsyth County in 75 years. And remember, this was in 87, so meaning from the turn of the century, damn near shortly after they got out of slavery, these white people down there in these towns, like Brunswick is three hours away from, this is way southern, southern Georgia, okay? Uh, going out towards the coast, an area where unless you coming off of 95, you wouldn't even bother to go. It's north of Jackson, Jackson, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, okay? And, uh, and they, after the turn of the century, after black people was emancipated in Forsyth County, they got rid of every black person in the whole Forsyth County. And a black person hadn't moved in there in 75 years after that. That's how these little towns are. And this is how they, this is what they producing, man. He said, ain't been no niggas here. Why ain't he gonna come now? Check it out. They asked for it. They got it. So why'd they come back, you know? It's hard to believe that this show aired nearly 30 years ago. Oprah's show in Forsyth was causing an uproar. As protests were going on outside, tempers were heating up inside too. Somebody tell me, where did the people who came, come from who were shouting, nigger go home? They came from where? Yes, ma'am, they came from, my name's Frank Shirley. I'm the head of the committee to keep Forsyth and Dawson County white. They. <laughs> Let him speak. Please let him speak. He has the right to speak. Okay, the news media is covered up. There were thousands of white people that came out to join our white people's protest. This is the largest white people's protest against communism and race mixing in the last 30 years. The news media has deliberately covered up the nature of the Brotherhood marchers, many of whom are commu outright communists and homosexuals, and our organization was the only one that dared take a stand against them. They marched, they brought in so thousands. not just anti-black, you're also anti-gay too. I'm opposed to communism, race mixing, and low morals, and homosexuals are of low morals, in my opinion. You don't believe that people of other races have the right to live here? They have the right to live wherever they want to, but we have the right to choose if we want a white community also. That's why we moved here. You believe? That's what you believe. Excuse me. And let me tell you something. Uh, boy, if black people could ever take on that position, if black people could ever take on that position, the whole world would change. Our sons would all be educated. Our families would all be together. Our people would all be fed. Our whole society would change overnight if we could take that same stance they took. And here's why we should take it more than they should take it. We should take it more so because we're not the ones that enslaved them. They're the ones that enslaved us. We should be taking it because they enslaved us. We didn't enslave them. They did these things to us. So why do we have to be the one to beg them to come together when they're the ones that say, look, we don't want nothing to do with them. Remember, man, this is 33 years ago and the exact same type of murder is taking a place right now in Brunswick County, Georgia, where this brother's out jogging and they murder him and it's covered up until finally it make it out in social media according to their, by their own tape. And as a result, finally, they get a damn indictment, man. This is the evil that you've been dealing with. This ain't new. This ain't, this shouldn't be a shock. This has been going on for decades. And our leaders have still sat up there and told you lies in your churches, man. And we still haven't woken up yet. Check it out. Why is it that there are people in this county, obviously, who are afraid of black people? What is it you are afraid black people are going to do? I mean, that's what I'd like to know. I'm, I'm afraid of, uh, them coming to Forsyth County. I lived in Atlanta. I was born in Atlanta. And uh, in 1963, the first blacks were bused to West Fulton High School. And I go down there now, and I see my neighborhood and my community, which was a nice community, a nice neighborhood, and now it's nothing but a rat-infested slum area because they don't care. They don't care. Thank you. No, what, stand up, what, stand up. You know, you know. Uh, do you mean they 
us, the entire black race, the entire black race. Blacks and you have niggers. What's the difference? He said you got blacks and you have niggers, meaning some the blacks supposedly care, niggers don't. And once again, that's them dividing us. How are you going to let them divide us? And that's exactly what they've done. They've taken you in church that are Christians and divided you from the brothers and sisters in the hood. They ain't, the part he ain't telling you is that the black people in Atlanta was starving to death. OK, that all of the businesses that were in there left up out of there, put them out of business, got rid of their jobs, destroyed the damn city, man. Once their people left. This is a constant theme that's been going on for us and it's been constantly blamed on us. And the fact that Oprah Winfrey even tried to entertain the idea that there's a difference between the two is shameful. OK, because that's what they want you to think. They want you to think you're not the nigga. You are just a regular black person, so you're fine, okay? You're not a nigga. When in fact, we're all God's chosen people, man. Every last one of us. And one or half of us are not going anywhere without the other half, man. Okay, let's get a little more. What's the difference between I'm a black not, person and a nigga to you? I've talked to black people. Black people, they don't want to come up here. They, they don't want to cause any trouble. That's a black person. A nigga wants to come up here and cause trouble all the time. That's the difference. And what you got to see is they clapping in that audience. They clapping in that audience because they agree with them. They agree with what they're saying. I have something to say. I'm very upset about what's going on. I don't think. Yeah, and then Edomite went on to say how she was upset about it and all of that. But I got to go to the scriptures right quick. This ain't going to be a long one. But I had to bring this out because you don't understand. You blind black people. You blind. You don't see what is happening to you and you getting ready to get set up for more of this killing. You getting ready to set up, get set up for more slaying. What happened, this happened in Forsyth County 30, 30 some odd years ago. They were protesting clan members, all of that. Now Brunswick is getting ready to start. And you're gonna see some protests out there, watch. They're gonna have protests. They already got GoFundMes and all that for these two Edomites that went out there and murdered this brother. They already raising funds and coming together with them like it's the greatest thing in the world. They've been true. You've been trying to mix your race with white people since slavery. It is 2020. OK, and you are still attempting to try and mix yourself with these people. And it will never happen because you're the chosen and they are not. Here's what the Lord said, Jeremiah 40 and 30. And when thou art spoiled, meaning robbed and stolen, what will thou do? Th Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, meaning red, crimson is deep red, beautiful garments. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, thou, though thou rentest thy face with paintings, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee and will seek thy life. Your lovers going to despise you, man. And they're going to seek your life. Your lovers meaning those from these other nations that you try to join, that you try to look like, that you try to wear their clothing, that you try to be like them. The Lord said you're going to be despised, man, by them. And he called them your lovers because it's like it's to him. It's like you leaving him who's your your God in heaven, man. You leaving him to go have sex with somebody else. That's that's what is the equivalent. It's the equivalent of your wife going and committing adultery on you. It's the same. It's the same as your wife having a lover while married to you. That's how it's that because you leave in the Lord. You leave in your people. You hate in your people and you turn in your back on your people. And then you begin to show your love to their people. The Lord call it, you know, he's despised by. It. He said your lovers will despise you. This is the 31st verse, Jeremiah 4, 31. For I've heard a voice from a woman in travail and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child. And that's you. You that woman in travail. Black people, Latino people, Native Indian people, you are those with that woman in travail. You are a woman that is like a woman that's pregnant and full of pains and need to bring that baby forth to, re to, to remove that pain. And that baby that she's gonna be, bring forth is Christ. It's Christ. Christ's gonna be the one to get brought forth and rule, okay, over the entire nation of Israel and raise you up and take away that pain. Take away these birth pains, man. 33 years, the same crap going on in Georgia. Okay. Middle of the 31st verse, Jeremiah 44 and 31. 
And it says this, and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion that bewaileth herself. That's like a woman getting ready to have a baby and she in deep pain and she bewail herself. Okay, that spreadeth her hand saying, woe is me now for my soul wearieth because of murderers, man. Like meaning she's like, woe is me. Like meaning destruction is me now because my soul is wearied with, because of murderers. And that's it, 33 years, man, you wearied with murderers, man. You were, you weary with people praying on your people and destroying your people, which is why you got to come back and serve the Lord. You got to start your life anew, man. You got to give up the life that you in in this world and take on the life that the Lord called you to. And guess what? You're going to be brand new. Your people are going to get raised up. You're going to be mighty and great in this earth, man. And the Aubrey's of this world will no longer get murdered in the streets like a dog. Okay. Psalms 44 and two. Fourth, cha fourth chapter of Psalms, second verse. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? The Lord's glory is turned into shame. The glory is his people. And his people right now are turned into shame. How long will ye love vanity? It's vanity to believe that one day, black boys and white boys are gonna be together holding hands. When it been 33 years and the same murdering of us, not them, is still going on right now. Okay, the same plots and ways of destroying us are still going on in this empire and have not stopped. This is why you got to come and serve the most high. You got to change your life, man. You got to fix your life, black man, and get it right, man. Middle of the second verse. How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? How long you going to love this, man, and seek after temporary gains from these nations, man? temporary blessings from these people man okay here's the third verse psalms 4 and 3 but know that the lord check it out know that the lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself the lord don't make the godly man mix with everybody else he sets him apart for himself this is what he does and he sets you apart from them and that's what you see with all these murders and all this mayhem the lord is going to rip you apart from these people man that's what he's going to do, whether you like it or not. The Lord will hear when I call on him. He's going to hear when you call on him, man. Right? He's going to hear it. He's going to see that you're in the right spirit. And you've come back to your law, statutes, and commandments. That you're putting together your family. That you, you're stopping the evil you've been doing. You're coming out of the evilest thing that has ever happened to black people, that Christian church. And you start to do all those things, and the Lord is going to hear you. And when he hears you, boy, I fear for the nations on this earth. I fear for what he's going to do to them next, man. Okay, let's go on. This is Leviticus, the 26th chapter and the 45th verse. Last scripture. All right. But I will, for their sakes, talking about the 12 tribes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. These are the ancestors that you should be looking forward to. You looking for the ancestors in Africa. You looking for the ancestors in Egypt. You looking for ancestors all over the place when the Lord said that he's going to remember the covenant of their ancestors. The covenant with your ancestors is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your covenant is written in the Bible, man, in God's word. That's where your covenant is at, man. Let me read some more. Okay. Whom I brought, middle of the 45th verse, Le Leviticus 26 and 45. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen. He brought you out of the land of Egypt, man, in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. And that's heavy. He, gonna, he took us out from among Egypt, whom he called heathen in the Bible, in Leviticus, in the law. He called them heathen. He called these people heathen here that's ruling over you. And he's going to pull you out of here the way he pulled you out of Egypt, man. It's going to bring you out of here. We at the end. We at the end of the world. And he's getting ready to pull you out of here. 46 verse Leviticus 26 46 these are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord had made between him and the children of Israel which you are black man even though you don't know your identity Latino man native Indian man in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses Moses came down with them laws and your covenant was sealed that was set by Abraham and the Lord like he said he gonna he gonna remember that covenant for your sake because he don't remember that covenant, these heathens will wipe you out, man. 
These heathens will get rid of you and there'll be nothing left of you, man. So with that, man, y'all take care. Be safe. Stay up in the spirit, man. I'll see y'all on the next one. Shalom. I want you to stay strong in the spirit of the Lord. Hey, listen, if you like this tape, hit the like button and share it, man. Hit the share button. Sh everybody share it to their own personal Facebook accounts. Share this video, man, to wake up brothers and sisters all over this earth. Hit the like button. Check me out Monday night. I'm live every Monday night. I bring the heavy hitters in. We do it up live right on this same channel. I'll see you then, Israel. Y'all take care. Shalom.